I know that I already have one biscuit recipe out there, but this is something that I'm calling my amazing biscuits. I actually made this by accident and decided it would make a really good low carb biscuit. I pulled them out of the oven, called my family in to try them. My daughter took one bite and said, these are just like Cracker Barrel biscuits. And so I knew then something special uh, had just come out of the oven. My husband came into the kitchen and he hasn't liked any of the low carb biscuits I've made. He's tolerated them, but he hasn't liked them. And he said, these are really, really good. And even my carbivore son actually said, wow, mom, these are good. So I knew we were on to something kind of special. So grab your oat fiber, turn the oven on to 330 degrees, not 325 or 350, 330, and let's start making some biscuits. Okay, we're gonna start with a third of a cup of almond flour. You know I've tried to reduce the amount of almond flour I'm using because of the carbs and the omega-6s. Um, and then oat fiber, I'm using one third plus two tablespoons of oat fiber. One third cup plus two tablespoons of oat fiber. And to that, I'm going to add one tablespoon of granulated sweetener. I'm using sucrin one. It's a one-to-one -one, um, mix used just like sugar, and it's a blend of erythritol and stevia. So that's sucrin one, just one tablespoon. I'm using a full teaspoon of baking powder. No, yes, baking powder. <laughs> a full teaspoon of baking powder. And three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. That's it. Okay, let's give this a bit of a stir, and those dry ingredients are mixed. To this, I'm going to add a mozzarella mix. So this is a mozzarella-based dough. You will never guess there's cheese in this. Um, okay, so this is just one cup of shredded mozzarella. This is whole milk mozzarella. It's not reduced fat, and it works well. I'm going to actually add in to this one cup of shredded mozzarella, I'm going to add two ounces of cream cheese. And I've just put it right on top. And I put it all in the microwave together. And my microwave is pretty powerful. And so I'm gonna put it on reduced heat. And I'm only gonna put it on for about 30 seconds. And I'll give it a stir. And we'll have to put it on for a little longer. If you don't have a microwave, you can do this on the stove top, just a very, very low heat. You can throw it all together, melt the, do this first, melt the mozzarella and the cream cheese together. You can do that. I just love using my microwave. I'm gonna go ahead and add the egg to this. And no matter how I make this recipe, it's just impossible not to get your hands in it. So I'll have my hands in it uh, way before it's done. Um, okay, let's give this a stir. What's going to happen when you pull it out? It's going to be um, the cream cheese will be relatively soft, and so you just want to start to blend the cream cheese and the mozzarella together. And it's going to go back in, and I may put it in two or three times um, just to get it to the right consistency. Mixing the mozzarella, <clears throat> mixing the mozzarella and the cream cheese really helps to blend it into the um, the flour mixture once you get to that point. All right, let's put that back in there. And what I had done, I did, it, like I said, my microwave is um, 1,250 watts, 1,250 watts. And so I put it on about level six and then I do about 30 seconds at a time. And once that is nice and melted together, I'm gonna throw it in here and I'll just use my hands to blend it all. The hardest part about this recipe is trying to get 12 biscuits out of it. <laughs> Once I get the cheese melted fairly well, I'm going to put the butter on top of it. That's three tablespoons of salted Kerrygold. You can use unsalted if you'd like. Okay, and that went not quite 30 seconds. Sorry about that. Not quite 30 seconds. And this is getting to a really nice consistency. You can see it's all blended pretty well. And um, I'm going to put the, the uh, butter in. That's three tablespoons of Kerrygold. Don't leave anything behind. And that will melt as it goes. I will put it back in for just a few seconds. And I'm telling you this is so good. I actually had, um, when I made the, the last batch I made right before I started doing the video, 
I um, worked really hard oops, to get 12 biscuits. And I was left with this many biscuits. <laughs> and you can see this one has been partially bitten. Um, the texture on these are just amazing. This is what they look like when they are cooled and out of the oven. And I'll break one open so you can see. And you can tell they're nice and crumbly, just like a true flour biscuit. Okay. Let me pull this out. I think it's ready. I'll give it another stir. And then we'll start incorporating it into the flour mixture. And what I found in terms of being able to get 12 biscuits out of this is if you mix it all together, pull it into half, get six out of that half, and then do the next half, you can generally figure it out. Um, this recipe, this biscuit recipe that I'm making, I've been making it uh, with a few variations. And this isn't, by the way, isn't going to mix completely. But I've been making it with a few variations to make cinnamon rolls and orange Danish rolls. So I'll be sharing those recipes with you as well. Let me pull that out of the way. And I'm just going to dump it in there. The melted butter, you really want the butter melted. It's not going to incorporate with the, the uh, cream cheese or the mozzarella. Okay. And so generally, this is wishful thinking. But I take my um, spatula and at least try to mix it well enough that the butter gets absorbed. But to really get the mozzarella to mix with the flour, you've got to handle it. Just got to get your hands in there and knead it a little bit. Um, it, like I said, it doesn't matter what I do. It's <laughs> hard to get my fingers in it. And you won't mind at all, because then you can lick your fingers. Okay, so let me get this off the spatula, and I'll get my hands in there. Ooh. I am nothing if I'm not a messy cook. Okay, so got my hands in there, and I've got the oven preheating to 330. I've got parchment paper laid out on a baking sheet. Now this dough, I've already mentioned that I made amazing um, cinnamon rolls with it, and I'll be sharing that recipe really soon. But I also think that this recipe would be wonderful if you added some shredded cheddar cheese and some bacon or garlic and made um, the cheddar biscuits with it. I also think that this dough would be amazing rolled out and used as a chicken pot pie or turkey pot pie for leftovers. Any kind of pastry like that I think would be great. You might have to tweak it a little bit um, for those things, but I think this would work really well. And um, this is pretty much mixed. If you taste the dough at this point, it will taste a lot like a flour biscuit. Okay, so I'm gonna put the dough in half. And I have no minions to help me roll this out today. So I'm just gonna sh show you a little bit of how I do this. So that's about half the dough. And I'll half it again. And I want to get three biscuits out of this. So what I've done, and you could take the biscuits, and you could roll it out with a rolling pin and cut it with a, um, a glass or pastry cutter or something, a biscuit cutter. I have not done that. I've patted them out like this and just put them down on the baking sheet. So I basically roll them in a ball, and then I press them out. and you should be able to get three biscuits out of that. <laughs> it's hard to be one of my minions. And that's it. You're gonna just keep kind of working with the dough. These are not huge. Now let's think about the carbs in these. Um, the two ounces of, of um, cream cheese gave us two total carbs. The mozzarella gave us none, which is wonderful. The, um, some people like to count a carb for that. You can do that if you'd like. Um, grab a little bit of that. This guy got shorted somehow. The um, primary source of carbs is the almond flour. It's one third cup. And I believe that one third cup of almond flour has 20, has had, there are 24 and a cup, total carbs in a cup. So that would give you eight carbs. So that's eight carbs. 
the fiber, and this depends on how you count the fiber, because the um, the fiber on these is um, the the oat fiber is totally insoluble fiber, and so I don't usually count that. So if we're looking at that, we're looking about what uh, ten, yeah ten carbs for the whole thing. You've got butter, you've got baking powder. So if I get twelve biscuits, we're looking at let's even just round it up we're looking at about one total carb per biscuit now that's again not including the fiber um, these are not terribly uniform but they're going in the oven there are 12 of them and when they come out they will look like this and this is about the size that i made so they do rise some and i think these are a great size to put to slice and put a biscuit or a bacon and egg bacon egg and cheese there are so many pork tenderloin, so many wonderful things that you can do with these biscuits. Um, I think these also would be great for a stuffing mix when I make dressing next time, and I may give that a try. I hope that you try these amazing biscuits with your family and that you enjoy them as much as we do.